Yo, what's going on, guys? Mike the Outsider back with another video. Today, we are doing the yearly, for the last three years anyway, third annual, there, that's better way to say, third annual year in review of my channel, my life, and everything in between. Let's get into it. So, first thing uh, I'd like to talk about is that. This is going to be structured slightly different than the other ones, as this one is going to be more real life based stuff and less YouTube instead of vice versa, but kind of what you expect anyway from year in review. It's everything in between both just happens that more has happened in real life than with YouTube for once. So, there's that. But, um, yeah, first thing, uh, subscriber count. Um, I think so we hit 205 subscribers this year, and I'm thankful for every single one, whether you're a friend of mine in real life that I've met through school, friend of mine that I met through Roblox and Discord, or just someone that would have to randomly find my channel. I think each and every single one of you, personally, and from the bottom of my heart. And leading off from that, I'd like to thank the people I met, like, just in general, not just subscribers, because I don't expect every single person I know on Discord and Roblox to subscribe to my channel, because that would be unrealistic as fuck. And just, no. Uh, I'd, they, I'd like to thank them as well, just all the people in my life over this past year that have tried to help me through what I've been going through and with what I've dealt with and again touching on it now get more into it as the video goes on probably towards the end of the video if anything and uh, yeah and then we go on to videos I know it's been few and far between of when I upload but, uh, you know, every single video, starting with the stream on New Year's Eve to New Year's Day, which technically when this video is supposed to be uploaded, I don't know, I probably will just upload this the day I'm up recording, which is the 20th, because that's just easier for me, and I don't expect anything to happen within the next 11 days. So, um, yeah. But I've, like I was trying to say before, though, uh, I've re I've enjoyed recording almost every single video. Like, there's not been a video, even though people may call them, like, rushed or, like, poor quality because I don't edit, which, that's not a secret. I don't edit. I don't normally make thumbnails. It's, I'm trying to get more into thumbnail making again, but I rarely do anymore, if at all. But... Yeah, I definitely enjoyed making every video from the Minecraft videos, the Streamless Sky, and our uh, Minecraft world, to Project Lazarus, to Phantom Forces, which I still play daily. <laughs> Honestly, between probably and me doing a singing video earlier this year, that I haven't gotten back to someone's request for a song. That's fine. I'm sorry, uh, Lalo. I'm sorry that <laughs> I haven't gotten to that yet. <laughs> Ah, uh, fuck, because I know you want me to do it, and I know. I promised I would try. But th there's maybe been, like, one video I didn't, like, fully enjoy. But even then, I still enjoyed it enough to actually upload it and not just leave it on my phone and then delete later. And it's probably George having a laugh. I enjoyed it enough to upload it. So, yeah. Good that. <laughs> But probably the one with the like funniest commentary is my rank 200 trick shot that took over a fucking hour to try and get. And then I fucked it up and fail, and uh, and still pains me. If you haven't if you haven't seen the reaction, I'm just gonna uh go to the end of the video. Uh, let's see. It's about here. 
to do with the cool my internet. The one time I want to do something, my internet is just like, you know, I don't want to do anything. All right, hold on. All right, so I got it to be at the part like right where I'm switching servers. It's fix up. And uh, one hour. This is. I think it's like after this. Or something around it. I don't know why. I just like in there. Okay, it it's not after. It, it's not there. It's, I'm pretty sure. Also, like you're gonna hear double audio, maybe. I think. But how do you not know those things that shot? Okay. No. You don't because you don't know because haha. Uh -huh. OBS. My face cam is covered by OBS. But it, I actually haven't watched this um, video. How do I trick shot here? Um, die is how, actually. <laughs> yeah, I was screwed there. I, I was just screwed in that situation. God, PFR looks like so different. Also, I lost credits to <laughs> that. that, that was, that's sad. Well, get to the fucking trick shot, monkey. Yes, I'm calling my fast self a, a, a fucking monkey. Also, this is September 1st. This is like... Um, can I... <laughs> there. <Are you> fucking <laughs> kidding me! <laughs> Uh, this game is pain, and I forgot to fucking turn off the old phone. How did he spawn on me when I was dead anyway? What the fuck? <laughs> that noise was me slamming my face into my old keyboard. I still love that reaction, but where is the keyboard? That was me slamming my face into this. Just going E E E E E <laughs> And this is why I call it one of my funniest, if not my funniest reaction ever. Recording. <laughs> well video recording, not webcam. But like I literally was like <laughs> I I haven't heard that reaction at <laughs> all. Since I uploaded it. Uh, good memory, though. But yeah, that's probably my favorite fucking video I've uploaded. Just because of the end alone. Boring throughout the middle, but the end is what sells. And then I also uploaded a video earlier this morning that I don't think anyone has fucking watched yet. Judging by the TV. Phone recording. Please go watch that video if you haven't. Because I know you haven't. It hit me a lot, please. But the other funny one was fucking uh, Roblox Uno. Cactus. Seven. 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 Yeah, Alright, you, you wanna go seven? Alright, let, let's go seven. Yeah. Alright, create. Oh no, stack me up. I don't even know why I like have like a fond memory of this recording. This is why I. Like, Alright. There's no point in you doing this. Yeah, I, I see this now. I'm. I just want it to end! I want it to go back to like normal rules. Uh, I just remember having like such pure enjoyment, like just like playing Uno. Like, I don't know why. It was just a fun experience. Like, uh, my brain, it didn't make no sense. I just enjoyed it. Anyways, that's enough about the YouTube side stuff. The. Just not able to make many videos because this laptop I'm using. Sucks at recording fucking videos for games. Even for this, I have to record at 30 FPS instead of 60 
and it just pain. This laptop creates pain when it comes to recording anything. And I don't know how I record any of these videos or streams on this laptop. But uh, also, I know the fucking Messing Around PF video has like 240p <laughs> max. That's because of how bad this laptop is. Those were the settings I could get at the time. But I'm gonna try for the stream to get everything as smooth looking as possible for you guys. So you can have the best viewing experience for four hours or so of when me and my friend record. Or stream. Well, I'm gonna be streaming. I don't know if anyone else will be streaming. Or even who else will be in the video or stream with me. I can't speak. Speaking is hard. Hold on. Let me take a drink real quick out of off camera water. It is water. Anyways, time for real life stuff in a second. But let's go to now we have 18,000 views, just over. And yeah. Also, no one really has asked this, and I wish they would ask more about who made the profile picture for the channel because I am very thankful for my friend for making it. I uh, asked them like a year ago, and it's been over a year now since I have had it, I think. Don't quote me, but I think it's been almost like two years now. Like, no one asked about it. But I'm not good at, like, digital art. But I'm grateful for my friend for making it. So, yeah. Anyways. Away from the YouTube side of stuff. And into real life. Because real life has not been so much about fun and games necessarily, if that makes sense. So, I guess I should start this at the beginning of the year, back in January. Um, I was just coming off winter break, and I met a friend who, I, I met someone that lives all the way in Hong Kong, and I enjoy talking to them a lot, and also they helped me a lot with what I was dealing with mentally a lot of times. And, um, <clears throat> don't stop dying, please. I'm making a video. Stop. Uh, a lot of times I would have pretty much I ruined my sleep schedule so I could talk to this friend because they're 12 hours ahead of me. Like, exactly the time zones and everything. And, um, <clears throat> fuck it. My throat is not gonna let me make it through this video. I'm sorry. <sighs> they, yeah, my, my sleep schedule was already kind of ruined because I was fully remote. So I didn't have to do hardly anything for school most days. <clears throat> And, um, yeah. But then it got worse because I actually had to start showing up for each class and, like, actually, like, doing a bit of schoolwork and everything. Because my school was really weird. And, um, I would get done with school at, like, 3, no, 2.30 my time. And then possibly stay awake for an hour to three hours, depending on what I had to do that day. Three hours was more if I went to the store and then ate early. Uh, and then take a nap. Usually it went from like five to seven to sometimes nine or like almost midnight. <coughs> I'd stay awake for a couple hours, usually till one to three. Sleep uh, for like another hour or two. So I'm like waking up at like four or five usually. <laughs> Back at it again. Rinse and repeat that for 
all the way from January all the way up to May when I graduated. And um, in that, I was mainly staying uh, with my mom. No, I'm, I was here in this house um, with my dad and his slash my room, my roommate. Um, and then I went down there for a couple weeks, back down to my mom's, because I was here all winter break, from like, yeah, I didn't even spend like Christmas Eve, Christmas Day with my mom or anything, I don't think, could be misremembering, but don't, not really important, fully, um, did that, was down there for a couple weeks, until... I think I went down there like middle of January. It lasted till the first week of February. I actually put, pull it up on the uh, calendar. I go back to February. February 7th is the day I came back up here. Because, and also if you're North American, or a fan of football in general, wherever you are, that is the day of the Super Bowl. And the day before, that the, the 6th of February, my mom's boyfriend got fucking plastered with alcohol. And it was just a horrible fucking evening. Like, that... Cops were called. Uh, I remember um, him and my mom were screaming at each other. They broke up for a short period of time. They yelled, cussed, fought, threw shit at each other. I'm assuming everything for a couple hours. Um, they, she wanted him to be kicked out, but. The, since his name was on the lease, they couldn't kick her him out, so, yeah, cops were called then, cops come over and ask whatever, what's happening and everything, they split, my mom had to be in my room for the night, while he was allowed to just be in the living room, and wear off his drunkenness, still hate that. Then, like, the next morning, because that whole night, he was just drunk as fuck. And l since he had this, like, stereo system, kind of like, you can probably like, barely see, but, like, the one that I have here, kind of like that. And the speakers were against my wall, and my wall was already thin as fuck. And so... And my bed was also against the wall. So, that, I'm shocked I slept that night. But yeah. And then that next morning, my mom had called my dad. I moved all my stuff out of the house there that I could. Brought it all up here. Um, my mom moved in with my grandma. And then I stayed here and finished out school here and didn't end up going actually even back down to my mom's till June. Like early late May, early June, like shortly after I graduated. And then I was supposed to get a job around then. Like after I came back up here. But then me being how I am. Which, speaking of, hold on, I know we're about to get into all this, but, like, I just need to show my diploma off, because I have not shown it to anyone. So, like, it makes me feel proud to know I have a diploma, which is in here. 
even though the chroma <laughs> diploma anyways yeah being back down there was yeah brought back a lot of less than good memories for the first couple of days I'll say um yeah but I made it through I was able to still do everything normally and then I came back up here and was supposed to get a job started applying to a couple places none reached back but I only applied to like four my dad wanted me to do a lot but me being me I didn't have motivation to get a job I didn't have motivation to really do anything outside of Discord and video games. That was my motivation. I don't know. I'm still trapped in that mindset, but I'm trying to get away from it. But as you'll hear shortly, it's been hard to get out of that mindset for circumstances. This this carried on into July. In July, I still hadn't gotten a job. I applied to Walmart, even didn't hear anything back from them or anything. And those four were the only four I ever applied to. And then late July, let's scroll down. Like, around like the third, the 29th to the 31st of July, about these three days. Uh, we went to the store, and I started feeling, like, really sick that day. Like, I felt dizzy. I felt mo no motivation to do anything but lay in bed all day. I had a pounding headache. I, my throat felt like I fucking swallowed, like, a fucking shard of glass or something. It fucking hurt to swallow. And, um... Then we go to the store. I deal with all of that. Just thinking, oh, maybe I'm dehydrated because at this point I've been like four days straight of not having any water because I wasn't drinking even tap water at the time. So we go to the store and then we get home. So I down four bottles of water. Still didn't help the headache. Still didn't help sore throats. Didn't really help anything. And so. I lay down, and then I wake up even feeling even worse, sore, sick to my stomach, can't hardly fucking move. Then that just progressively gets worse and worse next couple days into August. And we found out the 31st that my roommate had tested positive for uh, the virus. Don't know if you can get demonetized. Don't care about demonetization. Just the virus. All we'll say. Because, and it's most likely he got it from going to uh, Six Flags Amusement Park. Where they said that it was sanitary and all this blah 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 bullshit. Whatever. Whatever you want to say. And, um. He got COVID. Didn't tell us for a couple of days. He was just hiding in his room as much as possible and everything. Thinking that he was just sick. Until it got too bad and then all of a sudden one day just like, Oh hey, I have COVID by the way. Problem. I'm really sick. And then he went to the hospital. Came out for a couple of days. Then went back in and stayed in ICU for 10 days. And then that's when they found out he had COVID. And then, this is like already after I started getting symptoms that we found out. Or no, this is before, this is a couple days before I had symptoms. So he told us probably that the 27th, a couple days later, I finally started getting symptoms. While being extra careful of everything. And then... By 
that Saturday, Sunday, I started feeling horrible. I couldn't hardly sit in my chair, couldn't hardly talk, couldn't hardly stay awake, couldn't stay warm or cold. I was constantly in fever, shivering, stomach feeling like shit, couldn't hardly sit up, couldn't get enough fucking water to save my life. Fucking, it, it was shit, it was, it was horrible. Like, that, I've never been that fucking sick. Like, one night I woke up, like, in the middle of the night, like, one in the morning, probably. I had to go to the bathroom. It took me five minutes to get off this bed to just fucking sit up and go to the bathroom. And when I did, I nearly collapsed in the bathroom. Because I just, my legs wanted to give out, I was shaking, I... It was just horrible. I don't wish COVID on anyone. If you've had COVID, I understand fully what you've gone through, for the most part. I, I've had it, I had it the least out of the three people in this house, but it was still enough for me to fear COVID. I'm not, I'm not vaccinated. I'm not going to probably get vaccinated. Because I've already had it, so what's the point? But I'm not saying to go get it, to not go get it. I'm just saying do whatever you feel is right. And that's where I'll leave that. And um, then a couple days later, probably... Yeah, probably almost a week later after I started like feeling horrible. Uh, my dad got it. And... Um, It didn't take long to do its worst. First couple of days, it was fine. My dad's like, oh, I'm just like starting to lose my taste, starting to lose my smell, starting to not feel the best. And then we got tested the 10th of August, which was my dad's birthday. I was still like in the middle of like symptoms and everything. My dad... Um, her mind came back, like, while we were still out and about doing a couple small things that we could, like trying to get medicine and all that. On our way back from doing that, or coming back from getting his test, because he had to take his uh, city over, because they couldn't do it at the uh, pharmacy where mine was. Um, my already came back, I had already tested positive. It already was shown I tested positive and everything. Then, a couple days later, the 12th, he tested positive. Or the 11th, 11th or 12th, it showed that he did. And then, uh, the f that Friday, or Saturday, the s that Saturday, The 12th, they called me. Yeah. The health department called me. Um, asking, oh, what are your symptoms? What are this, that, and the other? And I'm like, Joel didn't really have much of trouble breathing, luckily. But um, it hurt to swallow. It hurt to do a lot of things. I had, like, no stamina, no energy. It hurt to do a lot of things. Even just like walking sometimes was like really hard. They called me. I then had my dad talk to them because I knew they would be calling him anyways. And since he had it even worse, he should probably know as well about like what to do and everything. He talked to them. They then he told me that night when he went to bed to keep an eye on him until the 16th and um yeah the the 12th the the 11th and 12th he was mostly fine 13th is when things started to get worse 
to, to put it lightly. Um, he's he was uh laying on the couch a lot, sleeping a lot on the couch. Hot and cold, hot and cold, feverish. Um, upset stomach horribly, diarrhea. Like it was hitting him the worst. But my dad was sixty one. He had a couple other medical conditions as well. And um, the thirteenth, I remember I was just starting to feel better because they said that was my cutoff date like by the 13th I should be fine and then I was by the 11th or so like a day or two later I was like mostly fine the everything was gone pretty much the 13th I finally was able to not say I was infected with COVID pretty much and everything and then I sat out on the front porch like I usually did and sat for an hour. And my dad was sleeping on the couch. And when he, he called me and asked why there wasn't, uh, why uh, his football team wasn't playing that night. I'm like, it's only Friday the 13th. It, and they don't play till tomorrow the 14th. And he sounded kind of confused. And I just played it off as like him like being half awake and everything like too much on his mind. I didn't. I'm not saying that it was probably COVID causing the like f forgetfulness of that. Because a lot of people just forget dates randomly like that. I'm not. Saying the same thing, it's not this, this, that, and the other. Um, the 14th, he was not better. He would be sitting on the couch and just like, there's like no good way to show this. Uh, he'd let, let me just like scooch back. He he'd just like be like sitting on the couch like this, and then you just like see his, see his legs just like shaking like constantly while he's like half asleep, and like his like whole body was like shaking and like breaking down and everything. You could just see, and I'm just like I would like constantly ask him like he's okay, like are you okay? Do you need this? Do you need water? Do you need uh Gatorade? Do you need something to drink? Do you need 20 different things. And he'd always be like, no, no, I'm fine. Oh, uh, yeah. And then I'd go back to my room. Kind of still isolate. And everything. And then, uh, the 16th, um, he went back to his room the 15th. And slept. Then the 16th, or no. The fourteenth, he went back to his room and slept. The fifteenth, um, he was in bed all day. He had got multiple phone calls from family and never answered any of them. He only made one phone call that day, and 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 it was. It was to me. And I had... Well, I... He called an hour before I woke up. And, uh... I had... Once I woke up and saw that he called, I went to his room, opened the door, and I'm just like, Hey, uh, what, what did you need? Like, oh, uh, just grab me a... Could you grab me a roll of toilet paper? I'm like... Yeah, sure. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Did that. And then... I... Throughout the day... Every couple hours when I'd get out of my room, go to the bathroom, grab something to drink, whatever. Um, I'd ask him, Hey, you okay? Do you need anything? Like, make sure you're... That he was uh, still awake. 
and everything. And he'd be like, my father would be like, no, no, I'm fine. I don't need anything. Thanks for asking. And then, um, I was getting ready to go outside and sit up front. I had my hoodie on and everything that night. And, um, not that I really needed it, by the way, it was like 60, 50 degrees. It's still August. But, um, uh, I opened his door and was uh, yelling his name from the hallway like I'd been doing. And I was just like, Dad, Dad, you, I'm gonna go outside, you need anything. But I kept saying his name for like a minute or two straight. And, um, he, there, there was no answer, so I'm like, maybe he's just like, uh, in like really like deep sleep, which is good. And um, then I kept calling his name a little louder than before, and uh, still no answer. And then my roommate comes out of his room and is like, uh, "Is everything all right?" I'm like, "I, I don't know. My dad's not responding." Uh, I've been sitting here for a couple minutes just like asking his, like calling his name. And uh, there's just like no answer. And then uh, I go in his room. I have a mask on and everything. Like that that's how I had been doing it. Like every time I left my room, I would loot, put my mask on and everything just to make sure that like nothing actually contaminated me or anything. And um, then. I went in his room, like, tried shaking him awake, like, hey, you, are you okay? Like, do you need anything or whatever? Do you, are you okay? Something wrong. No answer. So then I turned my flashlight on, because we hadn't turned on the light yet, just in case, like, I don't know why, honestly. But I turned my flashlight on to see if he was breathing. Uh, I felt his forehead. It was still really warm. I, uh, turned his, like, I looked at his face, his eyes were, like, glossed and, like, wide open. I'm sorry. They they had been gloss glo like glossed over and wide open and um then our next decision was to uh call nine one one. Um I had my roommate talk to the uh nine one one operator who gave him instructions on how to uh try and do CPR and I, I just wasn't in a mental state. I was already like, breaking down when all this happened. I too many thoughts already had ran through my head to even try and do it clearly. And the he was doing that for about ten, fifteen minutes. Um, and then paramedics arrived, and then they took over. And um, when they did, uh, my roommate called uh, my brother, who's up in Wisconsin, to uh, come down and uh, tell him that something was wrong with our uh, father. And um, they, the paramedics tried for like half hour to an hour, tried everything they could. And, um, fortunately, he didn't make it. And, uh, yeah. And now I, I'm literally home alone right now. It's been hard. This is why, like, 
the, the mental stuff that I've been dealing with is like too much to even try and like get a job right now or anything like that. Like people can tell me like, hey, go get a fucking job. I don't fucking care. Until they know like what it's like to lose a fucking parent, a family member in general, but especially a fucking parent, no matter how little you cared about them. It it puts a different type of strain on you mentally. I I still am not fully over it, and it's been four months. Like the it, it's been too much. Twenty twenty one is a really really shit year that I wish to never have happen again. And it's been a year full of loss and tragedy for me and my family. It's been a lot of I I wouldn't say necessarily growth, but I wouldn't say necessarily stagnation either. It's just been a bit of both. It I like for the first like month or so. I thought I would just like wake up one day and see him just like sitting out on the couch watching TV. But eventually the realization started kicking that that wasn't happening and that that he was truly gone. And uh just been hard dealing with been too much uh, I am moving out of this house within the next couple months it seems so that'll be a way for me to start over um, possibly get better mentally and I'll kind of be forced to get a job but at the same time I think getting one will help me mentally even if I'm not like I don't, I don't like see myself ready yet still but I, I definitely need to at least like start trying because I haven't been necessarily the best when it comes to everything, like for the last seven months, there's definitely better ways I could have handled not being in school. But circumstances mixed with me just being almost like trapped in mud and dragging my feet when it comes to getting a job back in the summer. And now, having to carry an extra burden on myself with losing my father. But, yeah. I will end this on a positive. Um, I, I have had a boyfriend for the last four months almost. Actually, over four months now. In a week will be four months. Um, I met him back in over the summer, like May, or April and May, in a Discord server. And we've been dating since. And uh, he's been helping me a lot. I'm thankful for him and everything. And uh, yeah. Anyways, sorry for the uh, less than happy note to end off the year in video, but uh, been it's been a tough fucking year, especially like the second half. It's been tough. It's been shit. It's been there are no words in the English dictionary 
or possibly even like other languages to describe how terrible this year has been personally for me and how horrible I felt like just, just so much loss tragedy just why anyways if you did enjoy this uh hit that uh hit the like button subscribe if you're new and um this will probably be the last video i upload maybe upload one more before the end of the year but on that this is the last time you'll probably see me till uh december 31st so if that is true have a happy holidays be safe cherish every single day that you spend with your loved ones your family your pets it sounds stupid probably to some of you but i also did lose a dog last month like just before thanksgiving so thanks 2021 you're a bitch anyways this is mike the outsider saying peace have a great day have a great rest of 2021 and here's the 2022 being hopefully better cheers peace